Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Ministry of Education undertakes bold student-focused initiatives. Schools in the Castries Basin participate in a disaster risk reduction summer camp. St. Lucia and Japan reaffirm their commitment to key development areas. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Aquion. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development is working towards implementing a more student-focused policy designed to redound to the benefit of not just students but teachers as well. The government of St. Lucia is advancing its efforts at modernizing the school curriculum and teaching methods with a student-centered approach. Student-centered learning shifts the focus of instruction from the teacher to the student. During a recent press briefing, the Education Minister, Honorable Dr. Gil Rigobert, revealed that the Ministry of Education is undertaking a number of initiatives which cater to that, including subject specialization at the primary school level. We are currently running some pilots in select schools, and I will be delighted to share the results of that pilot with you in good time, but we recognize that there is some good justification for specialization, subject specialization at the primary school. I will in good time let you know what the results of that experiment are. It is informed by the very notion you're espousing that not all teachers are equally gifted or capable in the broad range of subject areas delivered at the primary school level and that consideration should be given to some specializations. The Centers of Excellence in Sports and the Arts and Culture will also provide non-traditional but important avenues for students to realize their full potential whilst receiving a sound secondary level education. The Education Minister further informed that the Groselay Secondary School's transition into St. Lucia's National Sports Academy is poised to be open in September of 2019. Last week, I think there were some final discussions regarding uh, human resource needs, expertise as we transition into the Sports Academy. I know that provision has been made for bringing on board some specialists, some sports specialists in the whole range of sports related um, fields, whether it be nutrition, fitness, and of course the particular areas of sports that we will be focusing on. But it's not just the students. The teachers are being given the opportunity to enhance their skills to better serve the students. Whereas there are opportunities for lifelong learning and continuing enhancement or advancement, the concern remained whether teachers could pursue studies and continue to benefit from their monthly salaries. Thanks to the partnership we have with CDB, with the GPE, Global Partnership for Education, and other agencies, we have been able to offer scholarships to our teachers and to ensure that they will not be deprived of their salary because we recognize and appreciate their uh, economic and financial commitments. This course of action is expected to revolutionize both teaching and learning in St. Lucia. In other education matters, students in the Castries Basin have been equipped with skills to assist in times of disaster. Anissa Antoine has the details on the disaster risk reduction summer camp they attended. The Ministry of Education hosted a three-day disaster risk reduction summer program for students from ages 8 to 10 in schools located in Castries and environs. The students participated in hands-on activities such as basic first aid and CPR classes and were given an opportunity to visit the NEMO headquarters to gain insight on the role of the organization. It is uh, an opportunity to, that we've given our, afforded our students to become safety ambassadors in the schools or more so first responders, providing them with the necessary skills, more hands-on, um, interactive experience on mitigating various hazards which they are vulnerable to, also at the schools, the families in the community, and ensuring that they become more aware of those hazards and presenting a platform for them to be more equipped 
in reducing loss of lives, property, and ensuring building a sense of resilience in St. Lucia and the community at large. The Ministry of Education collaborated with the Fire Service Department to enlighten students on the various fire hazards. Brenda St. Helen, a teacher at the Ave Maria School, stressed on the importance of educating students on both man-made and natural hazards. It is for them to be aware of what is um, what are our natural disasters and what are the man-made disasters that we have around the place. It will sensitize them and as the camp suggests that they become ambassadors to their schools so they will go back to the school and to um, sensitize the rest of the school. The Disaster Risk Reduction Summer Program commenced on Monday, July 8th and culminated on Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Ambassador Designate of Japan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Tatsuo Hirayama, on Thursday presented letters of credence to Governor General His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack. Japan and St. Lucia established diplomatic relations in January of 1980. His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack indicated that Japan has been a great ally to St. Lucia, providing support to the St. Lucia Fire Service, the rehabilitation of the Bokash Secondary School and the Miku Combined School. The greatest asset I think Japan has to accredit is the fact that she is a constitutional parliamentary democracy where governments come and go by the will of the majority. In my opinion, to be a free people is the highest order to which one can belong. For this is where true happiness resides. Ambassador Tatsuo Hirayama expressed the commitment of the government of Japan to working with St. Lucia in strengthening existing bonds and contribute to the overall development of St. Lucia. I wish to highlight the friendly and cooperative ties between our two countries based on our shared fundamental values such as democracy, human rights, the international peace and security, the rule of law, and sustainable use of marine resources. I sincerely ho hope to develop our bilateral relations to the next level with Your Excellency's kind help and general support for the people of St. Lucia. In this regard, I humbly request for your valuable cooperation and guidance to help ensure the deepening of ties between Japan and St. Lucia. The Japanese ambassador presented the letters of credence to the Governor General on Thursday, 11th July. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority and events company St. Lucia partnered with Caribbean Airlines to host a welcoming ceremony for regional visitors coming to St. Lucia for the carnival experience. Leila Williams is the marketing and sponsorship officer at events company St. Lucia. There's a welcome for persons coming off both the Liat flight, which comes in about this time, and also the Caribbean Airlines flight, to welcome them not just to St. Lucia, but to St. Lucia Carnival. So on the inside, there was, I mean, a DJ, there was carnival costumes, there were giveaways in terms of bandanas, um, little pouches with paraphernalia related to St. Lucia and explaining what St. Lucia is all about. Just, like I said, to make people feel welcome and to make them aware that St. Lucia Carnival is happening. There were a few people who... Um, um, who were coming with their costumes. I'm not sure if they ordered online and were shipped to them, um, but they were coming with their costumes. And there was a whole festive atmosphere because we were able to meet up with two, two different flights, like I said. One was Liat um, and one was Caribbean Airlines. So um, it was really, really fantastic in there. The ceremony took place on Wednesday, July 10th. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Everyone is at risk for getting a foodborne illness. While most foodborne illness cases are mild and go unreported, long-term health complications and even death can occur from a foodborne illness. Foodborne illnesses are caused by contamination of food at any stage of preparation. If you are a food handler involved in home-based food production, meat, fish, chicken or a big shop, 
As a food vendor, how you prepare food can put your customers at risk. Do you know the risks and how to avoid them? The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards can help you. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and spawn. Thanks, Nisha. Welcome once again to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Netball coach in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports and national netball captain, Shem Maxwell, is currently in Liverpool, England to be updated on the workings of the America's Federation of Netball Association's coaching committee between July 12th to the 22nd. It will be a unique opportunity for Maxwell to experience elite performances and engage with colleagues in self-reflected learning along the pathway to understanding the international approach to coaching and the strategy and vision to support the development of coaches across the Americas. There will also be an opportunity to participate in the elite coaching clinic to be conducted during July 16 to 18. The workshop will also provide her with cutting-edge techniques and competencies in respect of netball coaching at the national and regional levels. CARICOM Secretary General Erwin LaRocque is optimistic that heads of government of the Caribbean community are taking the matter of healthy lifestyle seriously. He made the assertion during an interview with the NTN Nightly following the 2019 CARICOM 10K held in St. Lucia recently. It has to be a coordinated effort between all of us. I mean, an event like this, and, and you would know, to organize an event like this is a collaborative effort. And, um, you know, the sponsors, the, of course, the organizers, the planners, the participants, ensuring that you get persons to come. The heads of government are very much aware of this, of this event. Um, what, we, what we probably have to try to do is make it, and I know it's difficult because it's always best to do a 10K race, for instance, on a Sunday when there's less traffic. But if it was possible to have it closer to the heads of government meeting, like we had in Jamaica. So in Jamaica, the Prime Minister of Jamaica participated, the President of Suriname participated, I even participated a bit, and other, other ministers and so on. So we have to try to see how we, how we improve on it. But I think we have, there's a firm commitment um, to the issue of, of, of a healthy lifestyle and promoting good health in our region, and through sports and discipline. And also sports is also important for our youth. Next year is CARICOM 10K will be held in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And that's your update from Move Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. In a continuing effort to further the development of hospitality students at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, the Commission of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, provided yet another opportunity for the students to hone their craft through practical experience. Students were given the opportunity to host a diplomatic lunch attended by resident members of the Diplomatic Corps in St. Lucia, regional representatives from partner organizations and staff of the commission. The three-course meal accompanied by specialty bread made from cassava and sweet potato was prepared and served by the students with assistance from their teachers given the large number of students currently off campus attending summer internships. Head chef Riyad James thank the OECS Commission for providing the students with opportunities to improve their skills. He also used the occasion to apprise guests on the work of the culinary department. Earlier this year, the Commission engaged the hospitality students in preparing a five-star lunch to reward the staff of the OECS Commission. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. 
A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible and remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. Monsieur Ta Nisha, Monsieur Madame, Département de Responsabilité pour Information, uh, Gouvernement Sertlesi, GIS, Assembly Television National, PIA, NTN, Capuzato, Nouvelle Arquion, Presato, Primus Hutchinson. Ministre de responsabilité pour l'éducation, on est avec Dr. Gail Rigobert. J'ai bienvenu et embrassé l'acceptance institution qui Ça, c'est un établissement qui est en place pour perpétuer une deuxième chance pour les étudiants qui ont eh bien, qui ont besoin d'assistance spéciale. Institution qui est déjà d'accord pour assister les étudiants qui ne sont pas formés à des degré qui étaient mérités dans l'examen Common Entrance dans les salaires. Au résultat de ça, le ministre de l'Éducation a annoncé une initiative qui a commencé en mois de septembre pour essayer de corriger la situation. Ça là. Dr. Rigobert, oui, monsieur, qui est avec Dr. Mason, qui est directeur de l'institution, pour considérer ça là, avec les parents et les étudiants qui ont abrassé l'occasion pour suivre le programme là à des institutions comme ça, qui a établi une réputation pour trouver des résultats d'excellence par ces étudiants qui a suivi ce programme-là, qui a offert. Selon le ministre de l'Éducation, Rigobert, malgré l'année les parents qui ont fait blesse pour qu'à placer les étudiants qui ne peuvent pas former un hôtel, qui ont été ni espoir, à dans un coin, et bien un coin qui ont moins de valeur, et qui a fait un savoir que l'institution qui a établi une réputation en cette ci pour qu'à accomplir l'excellence dans le haut degré. Dr. Rigobert aussi fait mon public la comprendre qu'il peut entrer à un programme qui est en plus bas degré, mais l'institution a la capacité et la réputation pour faire assurer que l'on finit complètement. Et puis le programme qui est dans une position d'accomplissement qui est trop plus mère qui l'on a entré. Alors, Dr. Rigobert a fait un appel pour les parents saisir l'occasion et faire possible. Pour ces étudiants, suivre le programme qui pour vous trouver vous une autre chance pour éprouver la vie. En haut, il y a ces quatre étudiants qui suivent le programme. Ça, là, les institutions ont commencé les soins en mois de septembre l'année ici. Les institutrices, ça veut dire les teachers à l'école, qui ont reçu un entraînement en façon pour occuper vous et puis la capacité pour instruire les étudiants à une façon qui est plus avancée. Assistance pour sécurité permanent à ministère de l'éducation, Kendall Codra, déclaré que le programme là, c'est un qui a opération en tout ce pays caribé là, ça c'est OECS là, pour développer et implémenter un programme de support pour l'éducation. Codra a déclaré que à présent, les étudiants très avancés en façon des technologies et qui ont expérimenté des changements rapidement qui a poussé les, les éducateurs pour trouver des moyens nouveaux pour éduquer eux. Si le code programme là pour développer les instituteurs professionnellement, c'est un qui a encouragé pour corriger la situation. Alors, comme la technologie a changé si tellement souvent, il a venu très nécessaire pour continuer pour instruire les étudiants et les instituteurs et les éducateurs dans le système d'éducation. C'est ici. Ambassade du Japon, vous êtes ici. Tatsuwa Hirayama fait présentation officielle pour le gouverneur général cette ci Sir Neville Snack, j'ai dit bon matin. En adresse pour Sir Neville, l'ambassade Hirayama, il m'a dit qu'il était plein pour sa visite de cette ci et au pays à une relation avec et puis cette ci Il présente bonne nouvelle au chef du gouvernement Japon et appréciation, bonne relation et coopération qui a existé. À cette ci et puis Japon. Ambassade Hirayama, il m'a dit qu'il était prêt pour visiter cette ci pour la deuxième fois. Comme c'était le premier pays qui visitait en Caraïbe, il a été visité pour la première fois en l'année 2013. Ambassade Japon a déclaré que 
des pays à qui continuer pour coopérer à ligne de bonnes relations, démocratie, loi internationale, la loi des hommes, sécurité internationale, et pour entretenir un bien de ressources marines so stables, comme ça, comme ça se valait qui tout avec tous les deux pays à qui embrasser. Il promet pour faire tout ce qui est possible pour tenir une relation des pays à vivre et pour continuer à renforcer la coopération. En réponse, ce Neville remercie le Japon pour continuer pour assister le secteur de la pêche cette ci pour l'établissement de la pour assister les maladies sida, pour assister aussi et puis façon pour les pays à établir une boxe pour un secours les services nécessaires. Ce Neville remercie pour aider à l'établissement autorité pour ménager les autres pays à assistance pour l'association les aveugles, réhabilitation de l'école secondaire, bocage et l'école première en Mikou, community center en Milet, à parmi l'autre assistance. Et ce que ça nous a trouvé pour nouvelle là, je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder et je vous remercie une invitation. Je vous remercie encore, si vous avez fait la vie, vous avez fait la nouvelle à Créole. Après ça, je vous remercie pour vous remercier. Nisha. Merci on Pale Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair to partly cloudy skies with a few showers today. A gradual increase in cloudiness and some moderate to heavy showers with a chance of isolated thunderstorms is expected from tomorrow Friday. At 11 a.m. Thursday, Tropical Storm Barry formed over the Gulf of Mexico and poses no threat to the Eastern Caribbean Islands. Over the central tropical Atlantic, a tropical wave located near 530 miles or 980 kilometers east of St. Lucia is moving westward near 20 miles per hour or 31 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to generate scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms over the eastern Caribbean islands by Friday and into Saturday. Further east, a tropical wave associated with an area of low pressure has a low chance of developing into a tropical storm during the next five days. Tides for Castries Harbour high at 12.17 p.m., low at 4.53 p.m. Tides for Viewford Bay high at 1.24 p.m., low at 6.20 p.m. Seas moderate with waves of 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.52 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.